Welcome to Road to the Great British Bake Off. My name's Shelley. I'm a really amateur baker. Probably not a successful bake. And I'm spending 2021 working my way through bake-off challenges. Every month, I'm tackling a theme like Cake Week or Bread Week, using real tasks and technicals, and holding myself to the same time limits as past contestants. It's just like preseason training. So join me and let's see what happens. Welcome back. Today is episode one of Biscuit Week or Cookie Week for my fellow Americans. And today I'm gonna to be attempting to complete the technical challenge from Bake Off 2018, which is to make eight identical wagon wheels in two hours and 15 minutes. Um, now, on the bright side, this is probably the most detailed technical recipe I've seen. Um, it's not the typical vague, um, kind of confusing one that contestants usually get. So I feel like there's an advantage there. Um, on the downside, there are a lot of moving parts and I have to make four different components for this particular biscuit. Um, so I kind of need to stay focused and efficient. Now, I'm not super excited about this bake. <laughs> because I'm not a fan of wagon wheels. Um, I think they're a UK thing or a UK only thing, I'm not sure. Um, and maybe uh, if you were a kid and you were given this cookie the size of your head, then you are like a fan for life. Um, I had them as an adult and to me they were just, I remember them as being kind of bland, boring, cardboardy nothingness. But you know, maybe they're amazing when you make them homemade. Uh, we'll find out. So uh, we'll get started here. And remember, if you want this recipe uh, to give it a go yourself, um, jump over to my website, road to gbbo.com, and all the details will be there. Okay, so step one is making the biscuits. And for that, I'm going to need flour and salt. I've already put the salt in there. Uh, salted butter, which uh, this is actually a first. I don't think I've baked anything with salted butter in it yet. Um, sugar, caster sugar, vanilla paste, and an egg. Um, the Just the yolk part for the biscuit, the white's gonna be used later on. Uh, first I have to mix the flour, salt, and butter together. Um, the recipe doesn't specify whether the butter should be at room temperature or refrigerated. Um, at first I was inclined to do room temperature because whenever you watch the show, everything's sitting out hidden under a towel uh, for the contestants. Uh, but then the instructions I know to say, rub the butter into the flour. And um, that's kind of what I do when I'm making pie crusts and crumbles uh, using cold butter. So I'm actually gonna go with my gut and use that, or rather use that approach, because I have a feeling this is meant to be uh, rolled out more like a, a pie crust sort of style and cut down. So that's what I'm gonna do. When I rub in the butter when I'm making a pie, I don't um, use my fingers because your fingers are hot and it makes the butter melt. So I use the back of a fork, um, which is a little bit more arduous than using a pastry knife, but you get smaller pieces. So more integration into the, into the flour. I tell you what, <laughs> working this flour really works out your arm muscles. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've made pie crust and I'm feeling the burn. Okay, so there's my flour mixed with the butter and you can see that um, it's pretty well integrated. No giant lumps. So next is to add the sugar, the vanilla, oops, and the egg yolk. Combine it into a dough and chill it. get all that out, all that niceness. I always wonder what the kind of point of vanilla is because you always put in so very little, but then you smell it and it smells really nice. So get in there. Coming together. I was worried I was going to need to add some water there like I do with my pie crust, but 
because sometimes you just need like a tablespoon of water making pie crust to bring it together but actually that looks like dough so hooray for us all right so here's my dough i've wrapped it in cellophane um now the instructions just say chill it uh, and uh, typical technical gaps, it doesn't say how long. Um, so when I make a pie crust, I probably tend to leave it in the fridge for about 30 minutes, um, which I would normally, I would do with this, except for I noticed in the instructions, I have to freeze it after I roll it out and cut it. So maybe 30 minutes isn't necessarily necessary since it's gonna be chilled the second time. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it in as long as it takes me to do the jam, basically, um, which knowing me will take me 20 to 30 minutes anyway. Next up is the jam, which is just a really simple mixture of 200 grams of fresh raspberries and 250 grams of jam sugar. I've never used jam sugar before, um, so I was quite interested. It's got a very different texture, um, and it's got little brown flecks in it. It's almost like it's a mixture of unrefined and refined sugar. So I'm gonna have to read up on that to see what exactly jam sugar is, but it's, um, it's quite coarse. Thankfully, this part's really simple. All you need to do is crush the berries, add the sugar, bring it to the boil, let it boil for four minutes, and then let it cool to set. I'm a little bummed because I thought uh, with the jam ingredient, this was gonna be my chance to try out my cool new candy thermometer that I bought, because um, I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But the instructions say that I've got to boil the um, jam for four minutes, so I'm not gonna need it this time. I'm just kind of gutted. Okay, so we're at the halfway point, and the instructions say the next thing I'm supposed to do is make the marshmallow and then bake the cookies. Um, but I'm gonna flip the order because I'm a little concerned about cooling times. The marshmallow gets to cool in the fridge, the cookies do not. Uh, normally, if I wanted things to cool down quickly because I was on a technical and I was on time, I would chuck them outside in the garden and uh, let them cool there, speed things up. But it's raining today, so I can't do that. And I figure it may take them a little bit longer to cool in the kitchen. Um, than normal. So I am going to do that for better or for worse. I've also run into a little bit of a glitch. Uh, the instructions say to cut into seven centimeter circles and I have this cookie cutter set which I've had for ages and have used once I think and I assumed with this many cookie cutters surely there's a seven centimeter one in there but there's not. I have the option of six centimeters or eight centimeters so I'm just gonna have to play it by ear when I roll out the dough and see if I can manage to get, you know, as many as I need in the larger size. Um, I guess that's why they call it a challenge. The instructions say to lightly fire the surface, roll out the cookie dough. It doesn't say how thick to roll it, so I'll have to use my judgment, and then cut into the seven centimeter um, rounds. Freeze for 10 minutes, and then bake let stand, move to a cooling rack, and chill, or, well, not chill, cool. Um, yeah. Now there's no leavening, it also doesn't tell me how long to bake these for, and there is no leavening um, agents in here. There's no powder, there's no, um, baking soda. So my guess is I need to do these about the thickness that I want them to actually be. I have a feeling they're not going to spread a ton. It's quite tough. Um, more so than pie dough. That, that might be the egg. Um, so maybe it needs to soften a little bit before I finish rolling. Warm it up with my hands a little bit. It still smells like vanilla. That's nice. Even though I don't actually love the smell of vanilla, like, you know, when they put it in candles and stuff, it's kind of gross. But it smells nice in the dough, and actually. Yeah, 
Tasty. Reminds me of being in Brownies in Brattleboro, Vermont, where we'd go up to the um, the brownie leader's house and make M&M sugar cookies. And we get to eat, mostly we just ate the raw dough, as you do when you're a kid. That's so much better. Hmm. So, how many, how big are wagon wheels? They're about thick wise. I think each biscuit is maybe three mil. Yeah, they're not the thickest because you have all the stuff in the middle. So, I'm gonna maybe go with around three mil here. And then if they do rise, it's not insanity sizes. I don't know if I can get 16 out of this big one. I'm gonna try for the bigger one. It's probably gonna screw everything up in terms of chocolate covering and, and the volume of, you know, cookie jam I have and stuff, but. Worst case, I'll just do seven instead of eight. If this were a real technical, I wouldn't have the wrong cookie cutter size, would I? They would make sure I had the right one. So I am allowing myself this deviation if it all goes wrong. Five, six, Seven. Eight. Okay, so the biscuits are in the freezer. Um, I had enough to make the full set that the recipe asks for plus one extra just as a kind of a tester, which is good. Um, and now I'm gonna move on to the marshmallow. Uh, the recipe calls for gelatin, powdered gelatin, caster sugar, glucose, egg white, and vanilla extract. So I'm gonna just tell you what the instructions say because it's quite complicated. And obviously, again, you can get this on the website, um, road to gbbo.com. But here's what it says. Uh, for the marshmallow, pour 100 ml of cold water into a small bowl, then sprinkle the gelatin over the top. That's one step. The next step simultaneous to that is tipping the sugar into a pan um, and adding the glucose, 100 ml of water, uh, and cooking on a low heat to start, increasing heat over time. While that sugar is cooking, I need to whisk up a egg white into a meringue, and then when the sugar syrup has reached the right temperature, I need to drizzle it in and combine it all into a marshmallowy texture. Okay, so my gelatin's doing whatever it's doing, and my sugar's boiling, and I've whisked up my um, egg here. And I realized I didn't get to use this guy because the instructions say that it has the sugar has to reach exactly, exactly 120 degrees Celsius and then I drizzle it in. So hooray for new gadgets. Right, biscuits are in the oven. Um, I've got about 35 minutes left, which is a little bit of a problem because my pan is on the small side and I can only fit six biscuits on at a time and they need to obviously cool. So um, that will be interesting. I finished the marshmallow. Not 100% sure how that's gonna come out. Um, it wasn't runny runny, but it was kind of runny. Um, so it said spoon it into the piping bag and chill. I was able to pour it into the piping bag and chill. <laughs> so here's hoping the refrigerator works some magic. Um, and my jam has set. Look at that's pretty good. I've never made jam before, so I'm very pleased with that. And I'm sure if there are any leftovers, my son will be delighted because he's always complaining I don't have any jam in the house for toast. So it's just a matter now of figuring out the baking time on these biscuits, getting them cooled, and then starting to assemble and covering with chocolate. Okay, the biscuits are out. It's been 10 minutes and I think they're okay. They're a little bit brown on the outside. They haven't risen too much, which is good because we don't want them domed. And uh, so I might actually just maybe do it for a minute less for the rest of them, so nine minutes instead. 
So while my last batch of cookies or biscuits bake in the oven, I'm getting my little assembly line sorted, very Henry Ford. Um, still trying to figure out how to assemble them because all the instructions say is assemble. Well, that's not true. It does say um, take one biscuit, say group A, the bottoms, uh, spread with jam and coat the bottom of the biscuit and then apply marshmallow to the other biscuits, assemble and coat with the rest of the chocolate. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do that without leaving thumbprints on stuff. Um, so like I said before, I'm, I'm gonna do it, uh, the chocolate in two stages. I, I think I'm gonna go over my time um, because I do want the bottom cookies chocolate to set uh, before I dip the rest. So what I'm thinking is coat with jam, coat with jam, coat the bottom, well, that's not going to work. Okay. Because if I do that, I can't set it down anywhere without it getting affected. And I know from experience that when I did my mini rolls and I poured chocolate over these things, the chocolate kind of hangs and catches on the, um, the grid. And then you're kind of pressing from below and you get an imperfect finish on the bottom to, to release it because it gets stuck into the wire mesh. All right. So I've got it. I think what I'll do is I will coat the bottom side with chocolate first set that biscuit side down so it dries and then do the jam take the second one put the marshmallow on it combine them and then I just have to figure out I suppose I'll be able to grip the sides to roll the sides in it and Hmm. Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll have just enough edge on the bottom here that's dry to, to get the top. I don't know. I have a feeling I'm going to have fingerprints in it no matter what. I shall do my best. First, I'm going to reduce the quantity of the dark and the chocolate nibs that the recipe calls for by about a third. And there's two reasons for that. One, Bake Off isn't paying for these nibs. I am. <laughs> and they're not cheap. And two, um, last time I did a technical bake, which was the mini rolls, it also called for melted chocolate covering and I had a lot of it left over, which just ended up going down the sink and it made me sad. Um, so I don't want all that waste and as evidenced by the biscuit dough quantities, there seems to always be a little bit extra here. Um, so I just don't want that waste. Um, also when I go to melt it down, I've decided I'm going to do it in uh, one third for the first part, which is to coat the bottom of one of the cookies and then two thirds for the rest because I'm worried that in the time it takes me to assemble and also for the cookie or rather the chocolate to dry or harden or whatever, whatever the term is, um, that, you know, on the double boiler, it could go a bit icky. Uh, so I'd rather be doing the entire outer areas with fresh chocolate rather than dip some, wait for it to, um, harden while it's still double boiling and then then hope for the best so that is going to be my approach and we'll see if it works okay so my timer just went and obviously we are not done so um this is what i would be presenting <laughs> to the judges a deconstructed wagon wheel um but i feel like i'm nearly there and you know with all the filming maybe i would have made it um if i discount the time it takes me to set up shots. I'm gonna say that's the case. <laughs> okay. I would like to know how bakers and pastry chefs and stuff get that perfect finish. I mean, are they just pouring and wasting a ton of chocolate? I don't understand. <laughs> those over I was trying to show them to you okay so I've got the bases of these guys covered and I'm just trying to let them dry off a little bit um, one of them's a wee bit on the thin side there and I didn't have enough for the eighth biscuit these two guys over here were the extra ones I made as tester biscuits um, so I'll coat them with the chocolate at the very end but they're gonna be a bit wonky looking in fact they're probably all gonna be wonky looking so 
just waiting to see how long it takes that to set really and then um, do the jam and the marshmallow bits I suppose I could do the marshmallow bits on those now Oh, my marshmallow is too, it was too gooey before and now it's a bit too foamy now. I'm supposed to pipe it on, but I don't see that happening. What will I do? What can I do? What can I do? I have some left over in the bowl that I didn't put into the piping bag. I wonder if it is a better consistency for spreading. Oh, it's gone for me as well. And it wasn't in the fridge, so what is that all about? Hmm. Scrambled egg marshmallow. It was going so well. I was pretty close to being on time. I hadn't had any major disasters or leaving out ingredients or mismeasuring stuff, which I often have. Or at least I have had in the past. I shouldn't say often have, because I don't... Ah, and she breaks a cookie. See, this is why we have spares. If I whisk this all up again, this is the last thing I can think to do. Okay, well that's piping a bit better, so yes please. sure how much of this I'm supposed to put on. I don't want it to slide everywhere, but you want it to have enough jam in it that you know there's jam in it. Ah, I broke another one. No. Stop breaking. come up right up to the edge. Ah, there goes another one. So I feel like at this point it's turning into a disaster. Everything keeps breaking because I'm trying to squish the stuff down so I don't have a, a you know, gap where an indentation um, when I coat it with chocolate. But at this stage, I just think we're just gonna slap the chocolate on it and call it a day because it's just going from bad to worse. Okay. <laughs> So I am throwing in the towel, literally. I was really happy up until the assembly part. The bakes went good, the jam came out fine. I even think I made the marshmallow part right in terms of, you know, adding the hot syrup and having it like double in volume. Um, but putting these things together did not go well. So what do I think went wrong? I think I left the marshmallow in the fridge for too long. It said, uh, put in a piping bag and chill until perfect piping consistency. I don't know what perfect marshmallow piping consistency is, but it's not scrambled egg looking. Uh, I can tell you that. So there's tip of the day. Um, and then because it wasn't super squidgy marshmallowy, I broke a bunch of the cookies uh, trying to um, join them because I want the filling to come all the way out to the edge, you know, not proud of the edge, but just the edge. So when you coat it, you know, it's a straight line vertically um, from bottom cookie to top cookie instead of chocolate in and chocolate out. Um, so yeah, I think I broke three of them. And then um, probably because it was marshmallow in, like chocolate in, chocolate out, it took more marshmallow to cover or more chocolate to cover the sides. 
and um, yeah, I ran out of chocolate. That and the fact that I reduced the chocolate because I thought I was being clever by saving me some money. Um, so this time, instead of having loads of chocolate left over, I was short. So um, yeah, so I'm giving up at this stage. <laughs> and what do we have? Five <laughs> pretty hot mess looking um, wagon wheels. Um, yeah, I, you got goo coming out the side on that one top right, and then same again over here. Didn't even get like, manage to get them covered in chocolate. So um, the jam tastes amazing. No lie, like that's the biz. So um, my son's gonna be delighted with that. And yeah, I, this is just totally, totally a failure. A huge failure. Shit happens. Um, so yeah, and at this stage I am 48 minutes over time and I'm still not really done done. So, oh well. Uh, I guess now really all I can do is taste them. So I'm going to taste one of these ones that's wrecked and not even completely covered in chocolate and we'll see if I like them better than regular wagon wheels. <laughs> mm, I think that says it all. Not really. Um, the jam's lovely. I don't... I think it's the biscuits that put me off. I don't know. I'll let my son decide whether he likes them. These are not... I was going to give four of them to neighbors. Nobody's nobody's getting these. Um, yeah, and maybe I made the biscuit too thick. I don't know. Is, is that is that wagon wheel biscuit thickness or is that too thin for one side? I don't know. They're okay. They're better than the store bought ones but I still wouldn't choose them. So that's it for cake week or not cake week, biscuit week technical. Um, not a success, but we'll live to bake another day. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, why don't you try the recipe and see if you can do better. And if you do, send me pics because I would love to see them. Thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.